we present neural sensors, learning pixel exposures for HDR imaging and video compressive sensing with programmable sensors. Conventional cameras are limited in their ability to capture fast motion and high dynamic range because of their fixed shutter duration. With Global Shutter, implemented in most high-end cameras, all pixels integrate light at the same time for the same amount of time. This global shutter induces a loss of dynamic range because some pixels integrate too much light, while others should integrate for longer, and can also induce motion blur. In this work, we propose to learn optimal pixel exposures to alleviate these two problems. We propose an end-to-end -end optimization framework in which a programmable sensor acts as an encoder of the scene irradiance and the neural network acts as a decoder to reconstruct both HDR images and high-speed videos. The learning of the pixel exposures in the sensor as well as the parameters of the decoder is performed jointly, given an application-specific loss. In our framework, coded exposure measurements produced by our programmable sensor are decoded by a neural network into HDR images and high-speed videos. A variety of techniques have been proposed to address the problem of HDR imaging and high-speed video compressive sensing. From HDR multi-shot methods, fusing different exposures and for which motion is challenging, to systems requiring additional components. Among those, coded exposures have traditionally been implemented with spatial light modulators, thus increasing the form factor of the system and requiring careful alignments and eventual calibrations. On the hardware side of things, a plethora of different application-specific sensors have been proposed for both high dynamic range imaging or high-speed imaging. Because of the mismatch between the development cycle of hardware and the development of new computational techniques, those usually lag behind the latest methods and would thus benefit greatly of some level of programmability. Sensors with some level of programmability or reconfigurability have been designed in the last 20 years. Unfortunately, those have not always met their public, since it has not always been clear what those should be programmed for. To this end, a novel paradigm in computational imaging has emerged in the last years, in which hardware and software is jointly optimized. This framework has successfully been applied to optimize optical elements or components of the image signal processor, but has never been applied to the learning of a sensor image capture. In particular, we are interested in learning pixel-wise exposures and use the following imaging model to do so. The incoming radiance is modulated pixel-wise by a shutter function before being integrated, yielding the exposure. In practice, real sensors also include an eventual nonlinear pixel response and some quantization process that are both important to model. Let us have a closer look at those shutter functions. In our work, we model binary shutter functions that prescribe at any point in time whether the pixel is turned on and captures light or whether it is turned off. In practice, we will consider shutter functions defined on discrete slots. Many such slots constitute a coded exposure frame. For a given pixel, we will schematically represent a shutter function with a bold line when the shutter is on and a thin line when it is off. We consider different classes of shutter functions that formalize the fact that those can be parameterized differently and feature different properties. The simplest is the global shutter we mentioned earlier, in which all pixels integrate at the same time for the whole duration of the exposure. One can also consider shutter functions in which each pixel would stop integrating at a different time. Such a shutter function would accommodate a wider range of incoming light intensity, now, also changing the time at which pixels start exposing, one can consider sub-exposure bumps of fixed durations offset by different amounts of time as proposed in the original work of Hitomi et al. Those bumps could also be made of varying durations. Most general are shutter functions that do not follow a specific pattern. Those are unconstrained. Considering different shutter functions is interesting when thinking about different applications. For HDR imaging, a camera should be able to integrate for different amounts of time. Thus, functions of class B, D or E could be used. 
While for high-speed compressive imaging, we use the fact that offset exposure bumps can capture information at different moments in time, within an exposure. To do so, functions of class C, D and E can be used. Here, we will be more particularly interested in HDR using functions of class B, and use class C and E for high-speed compressive sensing. The shutter functions are learnt, along with their decoder, in an end-to-end -end fashion. This is performed in simulation, in which irradiance data is fed to the encoder and the shutter functions are used to create a coded exposure. Coded exposures are output from the encoder to the decoder that reconstructs the irradiance. At training time, this is fed along the ground truth irradiance to the application-specific loss. Backpropagation is used on the whole architecture to learn the parameters of the shutter function as well as the neural network decoder. For real-world capture, the real-world scene is captured by a reconfigurable sensor on which the learned shutter functions have been compiled. Because the pixel response of our encoder models the real sensor, we are able to copy the decoder learned in simulation to work along the real-world sensor to transform the coded exposures in the irradiance. It is time to say a bit more about our programmable sensors. The programmable sensor we use in this work is SCAMP5, developed in the microelectronics lab of Piotr Dudek at the University of Manchester, UK. Similar to a conventional vision sensor, light falls onto the vision sensor via some optical system. However, contrary to conventional sensors, SCAMP5 also embeds processing directly in the focal plane. We also refer to it as a focal plane sensor processor. Specifically, SCAM5 has a pixel processor array of 256 by 256 pixel processing elements. Each pixel not only contains a photosensitive element as in conventional vision sensors, but its area is also shared with a small processing circuit. This massive parallelism allows not only to perform computation as close as possible to where light is being transduced, but also allows us to affect how light is captured. This is what happens with coded exposures. The sensor is connected to a computer, enabling its reprogramming and allowing us to capture data. A whole ecosystem was developed to write programs in C++, compiling directly on our programmable vision chip. In more detail, each pixel contains a photosensitive element, PIX, a small ALU allowing us to operate on the value of PIX as well as a few registers that are in pixel memories. One of the specificities of our work is to take into account the hardware constraints of our focal plane sensor processor. Because our sensor is digital and pixel processors are synchronously clocked, a pixel is either on or off. Hence, the encoder needs to use functions that binarize its output and that are defined on a discrete domain, since only a discrete number of slots are modulated in the shutter functions. To do so, the parameters of the encoders are kept as real numbers during learning, but binarized during the forward pass using hard thresholding functions. Those are not differentiable. To effectively learn with backpropagation, the gradients are mismatched and assume the forward pass used a smoothed differentiable version of the thresholding function. A second constraint is the limited memory in each pixel. Each pixel has to encode the shutter function locally for communication bandwidth reasons. Given this limited memory, a trade-off exists between the complexity of the shutter function to realize the more parameters, the more complex, and the number of total slots one wants to implement for a given exposure. For instance, a shutter function of class C has fewer parameters to encode than a function of class D. It is enough to encode the starting time of the bump in class C, while class D needs the starting time and the end time or alternatively the duration. Hence class C is less complex and can thus encode more slots. Finally, because the decoder is never learned on the real sensor, which would require a more complex closed loop system, it is crucial to properly model the different sources of noise and quantization processes of the sensor into the decoder. This includes noise on the capture of incoming radiance, the execution of the shutter function and the storage and handling of quantities. Let us first have a look at results in simulation. For HDR, we use functions of class B that have exposures of different durations. The only parameter to optimize in this case is the end of the exposure at each pixel. Before learning, the shutter is initialized at random. In this visualization, the gray level shows the end of the exposure in percentage of the total exposure. After learning, the shutter learns to perform some kind of dithering 
which turns out to make the job of the decoder particularly easy. The decoder can estimate the density of dots to reconstruct the radiance adequately over a range of 10 to 12 stops, as can be seen on this picture. Or on this one. In the HDR experiments, U-nets were trained directly on the non-tone mapped HDR values. We evaluated our framework in simulation on about 200 high quality images. Results can be found in our paper as well as baselines. For video compressive sensing, yielding high-speed reconstructions, functions of class C, D and E are used. The optimization tends to spread the offsets so as to span time optimally. Also, we note it tries for class D and E to make each shutter function to have a constant integral, which is probably easier to decode. We show here exposures for class C and E and their reconstructions. Again, our framework was evaluated using the Need for Speed dataset. Optimized shutter functions are always superior to non-optimized ones, and deep learning decoders superior to conventional sparse coding techniques. Let us now see results captured by our focal plane sensor processor. The dithering clearly appears in the measurements captured by the sensor. The tone mapped reconstructions indeed show information that would have been lost otherwise, under the lamps in scene 1 or in the window in scene 2. The information in the low range is reconstructed very well. On the other hand, the high range is suffering from a loss in image quality and shows some residual of the dithering that could probably be removed with further post-processing. Finally, we present results on scenes with fast motion, captured and reconstructed by our sensor. Measurements are shown on the right. All the shutter functions were using 16 slots, thus leading to a speedup of time 16 with exposure times as low as a third of a millisecond, being equivalent to a 3000 FPS reconstruction. This work was performed in the computational imaging lab led by Gordon Wettstein, in collaboration with Lawrence Müller from IBM Research Zurich and Steve Carey and Piotr Dudek from the University of Manchester. Our paper, supplemental material, as well as additional video clips are available on the Stanford Computational Imaging website at the address shown.